Hi guys, I'm Shane, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make a simple draped cloth background for your renders in Blender. This is a very popular technique being used in photography at the moment, as it's a great way to add some visual interest into your backgrounds. So, let's get into it. First of all, I've gone and made eight different backdrops that are available to download and use in your own scenes. They're all UV unwrapped and set up to give you some really cool looking compositions, as you can see in these renders I did using them on the screen now. So make sure you follow the link in the description to get your hands on these today. And if you do use them, make sure you tag me in your work, because I love seeing what you guys do with the assets I make. So if you open Blender, press A to select everything and then X to delete. We're then going to press shift a and we're going to add in a plane if you then go into edit mode by pressing tab press s to scale and input 10 we can scale this plane up this is going to act as our floor so what we want to do is come out of edit mode go to your physics tab and give it collision physics we're then going to add the plane which is going to be our cloth so again shift a mesh plane and we're just going to move that up a little bit just so we can see it clearer by pressing g and z to move it in the z axis you're then going to tab into edit mode again and scale it up by five this time with everything still selected if you press two you'll then go into edge select mode and we want to uv unwrap it so if we press u mark seam and then u again unwrap and if we open our UV editing tab, you can see our selection here. So to view this a bit easier, if we go into new to create a new image, change the generated type to UV grid, zoom out a bit and you can see that there. So to see this on our actual cloth, if we go into the material properties, go to new, change the base color to image. And from the drop down there, select untitled, which is this one here. You could have given it a name and you'd see that. And then if you go into your viewport port shading, you can see that that's applied correctly there. So if you jump back into layout mode, we're going to subdivide the plane so that we can get some creases going. So in edit mode, right click, click subdivide and subdivide it by around 50 cuts. You could do more if you've got a good PC or less if you're running on a laptop or something like that. But just for this example, I'm going to use 50. So what we want to do now is go back into vertex select mode by pressing one. And we're just going to select some vertices by clicking and holding shift. And these are basically going to work as our pinpoints that we're going to animate. So feel free to select them in a bit of a random order because this will give us a bit more variation to the final shape. So once you've selected the ones you want, go into object data properties click the plus there on vertex groups and assign the vertices that we've selected. And you'll also want to rename this something like pin. So if we now click off there, if we click select, that will select our vertex group there. So what I'm also going to do here is select the ones that we want to animate and I'm going to press control H and add a hook to new object. I'm then going to select the whole vertex group again just so I can remember which ones I picked. And I'm just going to go through and add hooks to each one. Once that's finished, you can tab out into object select mode and we're going to add some keyframes to animate this. So if you select all of your hooks and press I and set a location keyframe without moving anything on your first frame here, You'll then want to scrub to something like 60 frames and we're going to want to press G and Z again to move it up in the Z axis. And we're also going to press S to scale and Y to scale it inwards a bit. And then we're just going to press I again and select location. So if we go through our timeline there, you can see the animation that's going to happen. So to see this in action now, we're going to need to give this some cloth physics. So go into your physics tab and apply cloth. If you press play here, you'll notice that it just drops straight to the floor. What has happened there is that we haven't applied the vertex group as the pin group. So if you go down into shape in your 
off properties and go to pin group and then select pin and if you play that again you'll see that this time it follows the hooks there's still some bits that we need to change here so with the cloth selected we'll want to turn on self collisions this will mean that the cloth doesn't go through itself it will collide this will slow down your simulation a little bit so just be aware of that so if we press play again now you'll see that that cloth at the back doesn't come through so you could stop here all you would need to do to make it look a bit nicer is go to your modifiers and add a subdivision surface give it something like two and then you can set that to shade smooth and you can see that this would have quite a nice backdrop you can see it's all UV unwrapped but I think we want a little bit more variance to be introduced so I'm just going to delete the subdivision surface for now and I'm actually going to go into the cloth again and subdivide it once more this will slow down the simulation so I will just speed through this part and I'll see you on the other side so if you stop it there you'll see the results look much better so if we go back in and add our subdivision surface back this will fix up this mesh a little bit and I think that looks pretty good so this whole process is about trial and error so I'm going to actually adjust some of these hooks here to add in a little bit more variance so I'm going to change some of their final positions so that they move around a bit more and that should give us a bit more of an interesting result once you've finished making your changes select them all and insert a new keyframe again and that should overwrite the existing ones and get rid of my subdivision surface again and this time I'm actually going to just bake the simulation so if you go into your cache and bake it you'll see that nothing is happening but it's running the simulation in the background and what that will do is it will save the frames so that you can scrub through easily so I'll stop that around there and we can just scrub straight through towards the end I think that's starting to look much better Feel free to also go in and adjust your cloth properties. So I've not actually changed any of the settings, but if we were to change that to something like denim, delete my bake and rebake it, we'll see what the difference looks like there. Notice that when I change the preset there, it does increase the quality steps. This does mean that the simulation will take a little bit longer. And as you can see, there's a bit of a difference there. The reason I like to pin the vertices halfway through the mesh and not just at one end is because it gives us two backdrops so we can rotate around and find which side we prefer most. Another thing you might want to do is add some sort of pedestal or your product to interact with the cloth. So if I was just to create one of those by using a cylinder and if I scale that down a bit. So let's say that this is like a tub of moisturizer or something for a cosmetic shot. You can add in a bevel modifier, give it some segments, and then also give it collision properties. And what we're going to do, because we want it to interact with the cloth, we're going to set a location keyframe, and then we're going to lower it into place so that it interacts with the cloth. Doing it this way should mean that we don't get any glitches in, in the simulation. So I'm just going to jump back to our cloth here go back into the properties i'm actually going to change that to a cotton preset delete the bake and bake it so if we stop it there then we should be able to see how this affects the simulation as you can see there we get some nice creases forming around the product which will result in quite a nice integrated shot if i was to hide this here you can actually see what it looks like and the effect that it's having because what you may actually want to do is use like a basic cylinder like this and then as long as it's a similar shape to the product that you're going to be using you can just replace it with your actual product or maybe that's not the shape of your actual product and that's like a pedestal that you want to sit on then you can go ahead and model that and place it in its place and as long as it's of a similar shape it should work quite well. And that's pretty much it. If you're happy with your final position, then you can go ahead and remove all your hooks 
and apply your cloth modifier. This means that this will lose all of its physics properties. So you can go in and edit it, move around some of these vertices if you want. Uh, you could use something like proportional editing up here. If you just need to tweak the final position around your product, you may also want to add in a solidify modifier to give it a bit of thickness around the edges and look quite nice. And then you're pretty much good to go for rendering. Uh, I suppose the only thing is if you're working in a program outside of Blender for your rendering, you'll want to select your cloth, go to File, Export, and select OBJ. And then in your settings, just make sure that you select Selection only, and that will export for you. And that's the end of the tutorial. Once again, the backdrop pack will be available to download if you follow the link in the description. If you do use this tutorial to create any backdrops that you use in your own work, make sure you tag me on Instagram at Shane Spence Design. Head to my website for plenty more assets and subscribe for more.